First, I'll share four things I learned since leaving the United States 16 years ago that would allow me to retire in 10 years, starting with nothing. Then, how these four would help me retire in 10 years. Finally, how my reframed beliefs no longer delay my early retirement. I will show you video of us traveling the world as I explain. Okay, four things I learned since leaving the United States 16 years ago. Number one, I know about geo arbitrage now. That means I know how to earn or collect dollars from a high income earning country, but pay for my living expenses in a low income earning country overseas. That's the most important thing I learned that would allow me to retire in 10 years, starting with nothing. Number two, I know about wealth balloons now. I grew up in a culture where success was judged by an appearance of wealth instead of true wealth. All you had to do to appear successful and attract a beautiful life to yourself was to learn how to float a wealth balloon high in the air where everyone could see it. Creating wealth balloons is easy. People just use credit to buy expensive automobiles, designer clothes and accessories, and pompous short international trips. Then just pay for your wealth balloon with monthly payments. But in 10 years, they're just 10 years older when the economy collapses again and they can no longer keep blowing hot air into their wealth balloon when they lose their jobs. I'm not judging anyone. That was me. My first wealth balloon popped in the 1981 recession. I learned that wealth balloons are the road to hell. Instead of saving and investing, all of my monthly income was blowing up a balloon that made me appear wealthy to naive people around me, but it was just full of hot air. It was feeding my ego, but not my freedom. Now I know the truth. The guy I was judging back then, the guy driving the 10-year-old car next to me, he was probably way smarter than me. He didn't have a car payment at all. He was probably investing his money instead of blowing up a wealth balloon. Okay, number three, I know about Madison Avenue mind control now. That means that my generation grew up in a culture of conformance. We are drawn to making decisions based on what the cool kids are doing. Through movies, TV, fashion, art, and now social media, we have embedded images of an ideal life that we're trying to create for ourselves in order to fill some emptiness we have inside of us. We see the advertisement for a beautiful car with beautiful people standing next to the car, and we think, if I had that car, I would finally get that life. The Madison Avenue mind control distracts us from the reality that the very people in all those images often have the same emptiness inside of them. I understand now that there's no prepackaged set of actions or decisions I can blindly adopt by following others. We are each individuals and we need to look inside of ourselves for a life that reflects our own values, our own joy. Emptiness is never permanently filled with conspicuous consumption or images created by others in the absence of self-reflection. I've learned to think for myself now. I've read books like The Richest Man from Babylon, Think and Grow Rich, The Power of Now, unlimited power. I even write books like How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 16 Years and I Am Happy, an Owner's Manual for the Human Mind. Now I mostly just create images in my own head rather than blindly adopt images created by someone that will make money if I buy their image of life. And I freely change my images when it turns out there's not as much cheese down any given road. Yes, that means you don't follow me blindly either. You just make a nice soup of all the ideas you learn in your life, and you only keep those ingredients that make your own custom soup taste just right for you. We are all individuals. Just because I find cheese down any road does not mean that you will. Four, I know that bigger is not better. I grew up in a world that taught bigger is better, more expensive is better, go big or go home. Bigger is not better. Bigger is often just stupid. You see, bigger describes a comparison between two or more things. That means you're not even thinking about what's perfect for you. You just want bigger than someone else. External metrics are for empty people. You see, if you were designing a perfect house for your life, the square footage of the house would come naturally from what you value most about life and from your budget. 
If you're more interested in external metrics, such as bigger is better, instead of internal metrics, such as a perfect design for you, then you're unlikely to be happy with your bigger life. Do you know what else bigger delays in life? Your personal freedom. It's kind of like the wealth balloons. When everything in your life just needs to be bigger, then you may never win your freedom. You'll be a slave to your wealth balloons. Do you know what is better than bigger? It gives you more choices and freedom earlier in life. It gives you more choices about your future. It gives you the right to retire early also. Do you know what is better than bigger? That's for you to decide. But for me, simple is better than bigger. Perfect is better than bigger. Efficient is better than bigger. Cheaper is better than bigger. Do you know why? Because I'll not be a slave to money until I die. Money will work for me instead of me working for money. External metrics will just lead you to a miserable old age. And sadly, you'll never get to be bigger because there will always be someone bigger than you. Bigger is for fools. You can never win at bigger. But you can win with simple. You can win with perfect. You can win with efficient. Okay, how the four things I learned would help me retire in 10 years starting with nothing today. How I would use geo-arbitrage to retire in 10 years starting with nothing. I would get a remote job paying $3,000 US dollars per month. And I would live on $1,500 per month overseas and invest the other $1,500 per month in Berkshire Hathaway shares. Berkshire shares have averaged about 20% returns since 1965, but it's unrealistic to think it would continue at that rate of return over the next 20 years. So for this estimate, I'll assume I would only get a 10% return going forward. There is no way of knowing what will actually happen to Berkshire, but that is what I will assume for this. Okay, the Nerd Wallet calculator shows that if I started investing my $1,500 per month and continued at $1,500 a month for 10 years with a 10% compounded annually, I would have about $303,686 at the end of 10 years. That is when I would retire. I would leave the 303000 principal in Berkshire and live off the increased market value each year from then on. Since it would presumably increase in value by 10% each year, that would give me 30 k per year to live off without touching the principal. That would throw about 30 k per year retirement income without touching the principal, so earning dollars and living overseas would allow me to retire in about 10 years if everything went as planned. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just what I would do. So you need to talk to your financial advisor. Okay, how knowing about Madison Avenue mind control now would help me retire in 10 years starting with nothing. I would not need to spend any of my growing retirement savings to make any ego purchases. I would know that every year there would be some new toy that everyone was getting that made them feel better for a week or a month and that it would not ultimately fill any emptiness they feel inside of themselves. I would continue to create my own images in my own head that were more in alignment with what I really enjoy in life, which is experiences rather than things. And I would freely change my images when it turns out there is not as much cheese down any given road as I thought. I would continue to get excited about new experiences, about learning about the people and the world I live in, the arts, architecture, literature, music, and history. I would enjoy the personal power that comes from not buying a bunch of new stuff all the time that doesn't really provide any more true function but only clutters my life. When my 10-year-old scooter no longer is repairable, I would buy a used 5-year-old scooter for 75% off what it sold for new. I would take pride in what I did not need to spend in order to prop up my self-image. I would instead understand that I was on a 10-year plan to freedom and that freedom was more valuable to me personally than any pile of aging stuff I could have collected over that decade. How knowing that bigger is not better would help me retire in 10 years starting with nothing. Okay, by knowing that simple is better, efficient is better, and minimalism is better, I would be providing for the ultimate freedom in 10 years. Freedom of my time to live as I wanted to live for the rest of my life. But 
by knowing that bigger is not better, I would not be delaying a life of total freedom, a freedom to live every day according to my images, my design, and my dreams. I would be living according to my internal metrics instead of adopting, adopting external metrics that I mistakenly thought would fill some emptiness in me. Okay, how I reframe my beliefs so they are no longer delaying my early retirement. When I was young, when I saw someone driving an expensive car, I thought they were beating me at something. I thought they were a winner and I was the loser. Now I know the truth. That monthly car payment alone would likely pay for half of my early retirement when compounded annually. So now when I see them, I think, I'm sure glad I don't have that car payment. I would have I would have to delay my retirement by a decade or more. So I reframed what I think when I see people around me blowing hot air into wealth balloons. I kind of feel sorry for them. And it's not just the money. Heck, maybe they already have enough money to retire and the car is just extra thing they do for fun. But it would be delaying my retirement so it wouldn't be right for me. But if they have some sort of emptiness in them that they think they can fill with bright, shiny things around them, then I hope they are okay when they finally realize that external metrics never truly provide any permanent happiness. But there, before the grace of God, go I. I remember when I got my first bright, shiny, fancy car. I thought it would lead me to true happiness. But only a few months later, the wheels and the stereo were stolen. And those payments were okay for a few months, but I had to start running faster to stay afloat. It wasn't until the market crashed a few years later in 1981 that I knew how good it felt to not have all that stuff. My business crashed and I couldn't afford to keep blowing hot air into my wealth balloon, so that beautiful car got repossessed. I remember the day I felt the power of not having any more monthly debt. It was about midnight and a friend of mine and I were playing a pinball machine in a 7-Eleven store. I was totally broke. I had no income and no savings. On that day, I realized that I was the happiest I'd ever been on in my life. The freedom is not having mo a monkey on my back that felt 10 times better than driving around in that fancy car. There's a feeling of real power that comes from living below your means that I've come to learn since that day. There's a feeling of security that comes from spending less than you earn and having money set aside that can help you maintain some freedom in hard times. The power that comes from making the right decisions about money and sticking to your guns greatly exceeds any temporary power you might think comes from blowing hot air into a wealth balloon. Thanks for listening to my rant about how to retire in 10 years, starting with nothing. If you'd like to learn more about retiring overseas, Click the video appearing in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right now.